When I was younger and I first started playing video games, my mom made a big deal out of making sure every game I played was educational in some way. I ended up with a lot of PC games about animals because I was obsessed with shows like The Crocodile Hunter. One morning, my mom came home with a three-pack of PC games from a studio called PopCap Games. I loaded these games up and instantly fell in love with Bookworm Adventures 1 and 2. Especially 2, a spelling game wrapped into an adventure game based around fairy tales and other popular literature. Bookworm Adventures 2 was vibrant and its characters and environment were enchanting, incorporating some of my favorite childhood stories like Mother Goose and Hansel and Gretel. Bookworm managed to make learning new words and practicing my vocabulary fun, but would that still reign true now after years of English and spelling classes? Could Bookworm still make spelling fun 10 years after the first time I played it? Today, we're going to find out. Bookworm Adventures 2 was released for the PC on the Origin client on July 29, 2009. Bookworm Adventures 2 acts as the sequel to the second game in the Bookworm series, Bookworm Adventures, which revolves around the main character Lex, a green worm, battling through a sea of enemies from classical literature after being sucked into a book of myths in his home's library. Adventures 2 made few changes to the features introduced in the original adventures, although helpers like Mother Goose and the Cheshire Cat were added to couple with the already existing health and status clearing potions. Bookworm Adventures 2 is rated E10+, for everyone age 10 or older, due to animated blood, comic mischief, mild cartoon violence, and tobacco reference. Although the gameplay of Bookworm Adventures 2 is basically a spelling bee transformed into turn-based combat, PopCap includes elements of each story it attempts to emulate in order to give the game some sort of nuance. To start with the basics, Bookworm boils down to a 16x16 grid of letters that the player strings together to form words. Take, for example, the starting grid in my playthrough. I could use the G, L, O, V, and E tiles to spell out glove. I could drop the G to spell love. I could replace the O and an add an I to spell glaive, etc. Once the player finishes spilling out their word, they select the attack button, which then uses the length of the word and the obscurity of the word's characters to form a damage output that takes away a certain amount of hearts from the main character Lex's enemy. The longer a word is, and the more obscure its characters, like using lots of Z's or X's, the more damage Lex will deal. Lex encounters these enemies by traveling around the environments of well-known literature. For example, the first environment in Bookworm Adventures 2 corresponds to common fairy tales, with one stage representing the setting of Alice in Wonderland, and another representing the setting of Hansel and Gretel, or the Three Little Pigs. In each of these environments, Lex's enemies are characters from each fairy tale. He enters each stage and comes across a character which he has to engage in combat with. If he spells enough words to deal enough damage to the enemy, he progresses onto a more difficult enemy that either has more health or deals more damage. Eventually, the player reaches the end of the stage, where they fight a boss character with the most health and the highest damaging attacks. Beyond the basics of Bookworm's turn-based combat, every stage has the chance to drop certain items, like health potions and damage up potions, that the player can store to give themselves an edge in future battles. Enemies' attacks also have the ability to inflict status ailments like locking tiles to block their usage or decreasing the damage of certain letters on your grid. Although the player can pick up status healing potions that can cure Lex of these conditions, some of the ailments that opponents can inflict are just completely unbalanced. This is the largest issue I have with Bookworm's gameplay because there have been countless times where I've been completely locked down by an opponent's status moves that I couldn't even deal damage to them before getting absolutely obliterated. This was definitely more of an issue in the first Bookworm Adventures with Petrification, which prevented the player from spelling any words for two turns in a row. But ailments like Tau Lock, Tau Smash, and Healing can become very overwhelming very quickly, and if your board isn't good enough to spell out strong words, you can easily just lose almost immediately. Bookworm Adventures 2 has some other minor issues with its gameplay, especially difficulty fluctuations in certain areas, like the Monkey King stage being way harder than every other stage around it, and the inability to spell certain words. I understand not being able to use proper nouns that represents people's names, but not being able to use the names of countries or cities just doesn't seem right. Why can't I spell out Mexico, but I can spell out Quebec? I've gotten Chicago several times and never been able to use it. These are places that are globally recognized, why not just add them as part of the game? Other than the issues listed, I don't see much wrong with Bookworm Adventure 2's gameplay. It builds off of its predecessor's gameplay well, and it creates a unique and interesting experience that makes spelling an engaging concept.
The graphics of Bookworm are cartoonish and vibrant, but I don't think that's what makes them so alluring. To me, the magic of Bookworm's graphics comes from PopCap's renditions of popular literature characters. Especially in terms of the fairy tale characters Bookworm employs, a lot of these characters' appearances have been left up to the imagination, so the images we think of when we think of characters like the Big Bad Wolf can be completely different from how somebody else imagines that character. All of these characters are up for interpretation, and PopCap took this concept and ran with it, creating their own iterations of each character in a unique art style. Each enemy is drawn in a way that represents their character in each story, but the artists at PopCap did their best to make each enemy look menacing. The Big Bad Wolf is massive and human-like, seen as more of a werewolf than a genuine wolf. The Queen of Hearts is drawn with a constant scowling expression, looking furious any time she attacks you. The art for these enemies create a stark contrast from the heroic characters like Lex. Lex is drawn as a vibrant and cheery character. Even in the middle of a battle, he has a smile plastered across his face. Similarly, helper characters like Mother Goose are given a more caring image. Mother Goose is always shown smiling, ready to provide Lex with the health potions he needs to survive his fight. I think these depictions of classic fairy tales and literature characters are so enchanting to me because they remind me of what a storybook's illustrations are supposed to look like. Hand-drawn, appealing to kids, etc. Bookworm's artists were able to capture the feel of storybooks that I loved when I was so much younger, which brings a feeling of nostalgia that I think Bookworm is trying to give off. Even now, Bookworm is able to bring me the kid-like joy that reading a fairy tale before bedtime would give me years ago. The sound design of Bookworm is easily the worst part of the whole game. There are many different sounds throughout the course of the game, from Lex's voice used during dialogue, to the little twinkle played when clicking on each letter tile, to the voice lines each enemy belts out at the start of each combat round. That's why I don't understand how there isn't a single soundbite in this whole game that I don't find annoying. To start, Lex's voice is expertly crafted to be quite possibly the most annoying voice I've ever heard from a protagonist in a video game, save for maybe Bubsy from Bubsy 3D. Lex is high-pitched and nasally, and his dialogue speeds out of his mouth as if his voice lines are being forced out at a rapid pace. It kind of reminds me of how the Alvin and the Chipmunks voices sound, and we all know how annoying the Chipmunks can become. The voice lines each enemy shouts out at the start of battle aren't much better. These range from passable, like a quick grunt or enraged yell from human enemies, to ear-piercing shrieks, squeals and growls from animal enemies. The opening voice lines from each animal enemy are easily the worst, especially for pig-like or cat-like enemies because the squeal of a pig is high-pitched and extremely loud, busting out my eardrums at the start of each round. Similarly, the growl of each cat-like enemy is extremely loud and also seems out of place for a game made predominantly for young adults, as the growl sounds are extremely realistic and could easily scare a younger audience. Even small sounds like the item selection noise and status clearing effect noise are extremely loud and overblown, which doesn't help Bookworm's case because these effects are also high-pitched and just do not soothe my ears at all. I think the only saving grace that Bookworm has is the background music for each stage that attempts to fit the narrative of a battle theme, especially in the boss battle, with commanding horns and striking cymbals and drums. This music is, again, loud, but I think it deserves a pass for crafting the intended atmosphere well and being a well-orchestrated piece. Otherwise, the sound design of Bookworm Adventures 2 is a travesty, and I prefer to play this game on mute. I actually like the interface of Bookworm Adventures 2 a lot. Everything is very compact and easy to find, and every part of the interface seems to be sectioned off in a certain area. The bottom to mid left of the screen occupies the helpful items section, where the player can see information regarding the helper and items he entered the battle with as well as select potions to use to buff Lex's abilities or heal him of damage or status inflictions. Moving up to the top left yields the player information section, where the player can see how much health Lex currently has and how much experience he needs from battling until he can level up and gain an extra stat. 
The top middle of the screen shows how far the player has progressed into the level. I think this bar could be more clear by showing points for each enemy in the level and not just the boss to help the player determine how much fighting they have left to do, but as a sliding tracker I don't see much of an issue with it. The top right indicates the enemy health section, which just displays the enemy's remaining health points, so how much damage Lex has left to do before you can win the fight. The mid to bottom right of the screen indicates the enemy information section, where the player can learn about each attack that the enemy can use and how that attack might affect their letter tiles. Finally, the middle of the screen is reserved entirely for the letter tile section, which gives the player lots of space to think about the words they want to use to fight the enemy. I especially like how each letter tile that is selected is thrown up on the screen, giving a visual representation of the word that the player is trying to make to help them spell it out correctly and look for potential add-ons to make the word longer. Bookworm only really sports two menus. The main menu, which consists of the options and quit game buttons, and the options menu, which allows the player to lower music and special effects volumes and certain graphical qualities, like 3D acceleration or custom cursors. Thank god this game allows the sound to be lowered. I think Bookworm's interface is relatively simple, but it's very straightforward and takes lots of steps to help the player understand the game and its intricacies. Although Bookworm Adventures 2 has its issues, especially in the sound department, I still think it's a great game that you can easily use to just pass some time. I still load up Bookworm Adventures 2 every once in a while to lose a few hours, and keep my spelling skills in tip-top shape. Overall, Bookworm Adventures would earn a 7.5 out of 10, which I think is completely fair for a game that has a lot of great qualities and a lot of potential, with a few major problems. This episode of Childhood Gems is the second episode in a four-part series. Check out my channel for the next episode on Jumpstart Adventures, coming soon. Thanks for watching.